there are some pretty um, easy, well, some of these are easy, some of them aren't quite so easy, but there are some ways that you can help hedge yourself against coming inflation, right, yep. Cam? So, yeah, focusing on your finances. Yeah. First of all. And it's important. Right. It really is. You got to think about it as a prepper. A lot of times people don't want to think about financials. No. And you they want to think my debt's going to disappear yeah. during a crisis. What, why do I even care about getting in debt? Debt doesn't disappear. Yeah. No. It doesn't. That's actually, you're going to be the first people they go after. Yeah. So, um, one of the, like, if you go and look up ways to protect yourself from inflation, mm-hmm. the first thing you're always going to see is to diversify. Yes. Diversify. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, you don't want all your money in one place. Yeah. yeah. You want to put your money into different assets like precious metals. Consider cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. Like I said, this is unpredictable. It's volatile, but... Boy, it's a good time, though, ain't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> Cam and I have, like, almost daily texts, like, back and forth. Just like, watching it's pretty exciting. Whew. Yeah. It's some like, days we're happy. It's like going to the casino. It is. You're like, woo, I just made some money. And then the next day, you're like, I lost it all. Everything's gone. But it's super, um, but like we were talking about, you, you know, go back, listen to our episode. Yeah. There's a limited amount. It's it's a little bit protected against inflation, some of them. So mm-hmm. anyways, look it up. Um, real estate is another uh, strategy. Yes. Which is harder. Yeah. It's a it little is. bit harder sometimes, but there's other ways you can invest in real estate too. Exactly. Like through the stock market if you wanted yeah. to. And so stocks and bonds, you really need to pay close attention and learn how to watch and follow trends and things like yes. that. There's other ones. There's like tips, treasury, inflation, mm-hmm. protected securities, things like that. I actually did continue. buy some of that. Did you? Yes, in my uh, my IRA. So these are good ideas to defer, like you're taking your money and spreading it into these different areas is much safer than yes. just putting it all into Apple stock. Yeah, or just or leaving it all in your all savings account. All into Bitcoin. Or leave, savings account's probably the worst. Thing. <laughs> Seriously, like... It's good to have that savings. Like we talked about that emergency fund and all that. But exactly. if you just leave that money in there, the inflation rate is going to outpace your it will. interest rate. And yeah. so you are going to be losing value yeah. as it goes along. So you've got to figure out ways to so make this work for you. So savings needs to be different than the old time savings that yes. you're thinking. Uh-huh. It's still savings, but it's uh-huh. it's working for you. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like you really need to get some money education. And yeah. sadly... I've been doing it a lot more this late in my yeah. life, which is so stupid. Me too, man. The earlier you can start, the better off you are. Yeah, it really is important. <laughs> and the easy, the nice thing about it today is YouTube is a wealth of knowledge, and it's all friggin' free. Yeah, dude. like yeah. you can learn so much. I agree. There and like it doesn't take too long to figure out a few little things. Yeah, you know. And like for the longest time, you know, I was like, oh, you got to be a genius for stocks and yeah. all that stuff. But as you've seen through time, stock markets, you know, wax and wane. But mm-hmm. for the most part, it's it's a secure thing. It's, yes. It helps the country and everything like that. So anyways, look into that stuff. Um, as for your debt, uh, we will always recommend you get out of it. As like, much as you can. Work against, yeah, work as much as you can. Focus on your debt of getting out of it because um, you're not going to just be ignored. Like, oh, well, we don't have money. Yeah. Everything, money's not valuable there's nobody that's going to come collect money from me. No, you'll be the first ones that are trying to yeah. get money from me. Well, and, the, and the, some of that debt is worse than others too, like that high interest credit card debt. Like, boy, that's hard. Exactly. To, that's a hole that is hard to get out of. Yep. And they talk a lot about like the variable rate loans. Oh, yeah. With home loans. Like the arms and all that stuff. Anything like that. Mm-hmm. That they are going to be impacted big time by inflation. Mm-hmm. Like they will, sure. it'll swing and then you're paying a ton. So, in any way that you can refinance or whatever to get fixed rate loans because yep. those are supposed to be protected. <laughs> yes. Um, if you haven't learned to budget Oof. or you haven't, tr- you know, tried it out a little bit, you're probably not in the best place. Mm. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm the best budgeter. I'm not. Mm. But you need to learn how to use your money more efficiently and how – because – if you break it down, you're like, man, I go to the grocery store way more than I thought. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't become efficient at using your money the best. Mm-hmm. Like, that's one thing, uh, like, me and my wife keep talking about. We need to work on, like, making sure. So, you know, I'm preaching. Uh, I'm a hypocrite here. Yeah, for sure. And, but, like, honestly, if you learn to budget, it, you learn how to use your money more wisely. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to buy this. It's going to last two weeks rather than, you know. Yes. I'm going to buy a loaf of bread every other day. And that just protects you too when things go crazy because it's like, oh, I have a little more 
that's going to last long. Exactly. Buying in bulk, man, if you can. Yeah. Especially so as a need, prepper. You it's need a to big really deal. focus on ways to budget. Yeah, and like you said, it's more efficient with your money if you're buying in bulk because you're getting a better deal for what you're getting. Exactly. Plus, you're getting stuff for your preps, kind yeah. of, you know? So, yeah, and the budgeting wouldn't, yeah, exactly. include all that. It's all the same. So, um, where, and this is part of like diversifying your money is Mm -hmm. where can you use your money? That's probably safest Mm -hmm. renting, owning real estate, owning or owning places to rent and things like that are, are really good to look into owning land. Land doesn't typically, you know, it doesn't become completely invaluable. It usually holds its value. It does. If not increases its value. So look at, if you, if you're in the position to use your money for these things. It's a great, people need shelter. Mm. The one thing that's weird is because it's tricky. Like I've seen people that own rentals get screwed during COVID because of stupid little, you know, yeah. they've had to like have people in there not paying yeah. and they've and gone there's under. There's nothing they can do. And that's pretty crappy. Yeah. But it's still like most likely safer to own real estate and, mm-hmm. you know, and land and things like that. And again, that goes back to making sure your loans aren't flexible loans because you will be the one paying for the yes. inflation. <laughs> yes. Um, savings, like we talked about, uh, this doesn't mean a savings account because those are pure trash. Um, look into ways to save more effectively. Mm-hmm. Like you, you want to use like mutual funds and, you know, we've talked about that in our finance episode. It's probably easier to just mm-hmm. go look at that. Or even make sure they're at least like in a high interest savings account. Right. Which you usually can just find them online. Yeah. Get and the best rate you can. Yeah. And still, we talk about like money becoming invaluable. You still like it's stupid to not have an emergency yeah. fund yeah. and easily accessible cash. Yeah. It would take quite a bit for it to become completely irrelevant. So, but if you have that cash available, not in an ATM or a bank, yeah, that you can, you know, help yourself for that short little time, that's still a, a huge advantage. Um, alternative currency that's where we're talking like crypto's becoming used more and more mm-hmm. that's an option precious metals um i think are a good idea i don't i don't have a lot of that yeah like look elsewhere for information on that <laughs> yeah i mean i think it's always a good gold, idea. gold silver some. all that is mm-hmm. not going to like gold if you had a you know 20 dollar coin the ounce back in you know 1930s you it's yeah. it has gone only up yep so those those are kind of um, a good place to put. There's there's going to be value in that bartering, using it as a currency. Um, just look into alternative ways that you could basically buy things for you and your family. Yeah. Um, and then uh, things that you could purchase now that you have the ability to do that you've been wanting to do. You probably should consider, you know, the importance of it now while it's affordable. Yes. Solar power, I'm not saying you put solar energy and pay somebody $30,000 to install it in your house, but look into ways to, to supplement the power and that you're using now. Buy that freaking generator if you've been planning on doing it. Are um, you talking to me? <laughs> oh, yeah, That's you need one. Talking to me. But, you know, those things that you're, like, putting off, yeah. if you have the ability to do it for uh, security in the future, you know, that mm-hmm. just comes down to using your money more wisely now because... You're, they may not be available and your cash isn't going to go very far. Yeah, exactly. So, um, anyways, that's just kind of a quick breakdown of using and basically hedging yourself against inflation with your own finances now. Yeah. And, and that is all great advice, um, irrespective of any sort of hyperinflation coming. Right, exactly. It's just good advice yeah. all the time. It's I think kind of a quick of summary of our finance episode. Yes, but exactly. like, like, like Colby said, there's so many valuable websites and YouTube oh. videos. Like, look into it now because it's like, yes. it's going to help you in the long run if there's no inflation. Exactly. And yeah. you're going to be protected a bit more than yep. um, just going off from what you've been doing for the longest time. <laughs> exactly. So let's look at the prepping side of this. What are a few things to think about um, to get yourself ready for um, a situation like hyperinflation, right? And one of the biggest things is just storing those basic items that you might need because they're cheap right now. They're insanely cheap, like razors and matches and toothbrushes and toothpaste and basic OTC meds and stuff. Those kind of things that you need all the time that if, if some sort of even inflation hits, they're going to be more expensive. Right now, 
it doesn't cost you much to go get an extra, a couple extra toothbrushes or an extra thing of ibuprofen or whatever it is yeah. and just store them, right? As preppers, we do this anyways, but for this situation, the more stuff like that that you can get, the better off you're going to be, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it's just cheap. It's super cheap. Yeah, I think I bought three liters of 90% like rubbing alcohol uh-huh. on Amazon during the pandemic. Yeah. And right now it's probably 30% less than what I paid. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, exactly. if you had those things ahead of time, some of those preps. Yeah, it's a big deal, You don't right? have to pay a fortune. Yeah, um, you know, and fuel is another one of those things that when inflation hits, they're, it's going to be more expensive. Mm-hmm. So the more you can store, and man, it's so, I know it's so hard to, to store that fuel, but it you're going to be better off. And you can only store so much, but having some on hand is going to be very, very helpful yeah. in any of these situations. Propane, gas, all yes, those things. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Cam briefly touched on this, but bartering, and we did an entire episode on we bartering did, huh? back in the day. It's been a long time, but that could be the new marketplace. It could be the new economy. If that hyperinflation gets to the point where your money is worthless, what do you do now to get goods and to get services? You barter. That's that's the only way to do it at this point. So understanding the process of bartering and having either a supply of um, goods to barter with or skills. Yeah, that's the other thing. Is- you know what I mean? Like it's not always just tangible goods. Exactly. Like if you know how to do something, you can you can be valuable. And yes. Make you know I'm gonna do this for a loaf of bread. Exactly. And so having those things are are gonna be huge. And then keeping you know for bartering, those vices are always nice to have on hand, like coffee, and vice grips. Uh, yeah, vice grips. You know, <laughs> um, uh, coffee, alcohol, cigarettes, anything with sugar in it, like all that. Tell stuff. my wife I'm buying this for bartering. This is all for bartering. <laughs> um, but those. You just think about that process as as part of your preps for a situation like this for hyperinflation. Because, yeah, and it's not people even just, are freaking uncomfortable. Yes, and they want things that give to make them, them like, comfortable, and they're going to pay whatever it takes to get them. They will trade you yes bullets to have a bag of coffee. I guarantee it. A bag of coffee, exactly. A fifty pound bag. <laughs> of coffee. <laughs> just send it over. Um, and then the, obviously it always comes back to this food, water, and your, your, your basic stuff, like your meds and all that. You know what I mean? This is a must for any scenario. We talk about this constantly, but it all comes back to being prepped in this, this area, food and water. Your storage could be everything in, in, in a hyper. Alive. Yeah. It'll can't keep you money. alive. You can't, it doesn't matter. You can't eat your stocks. You can't eat your bonds, <laughs> no. but you can eat the food, right? So when the food prices start to rise, even if it's a slow rise, it's like, okay, I've got this food. I can supplement my um, food for the week with this, and I'm going to be saving a ton of money while this inflation is happening, right? Yeah. Even if it's not like dire straits. Um, so that's just always think about your food and water and your meds and all that stuff. And we always talk about your daily meds, but what about the stuff that keeps you alive? Maybe you have a heart problem or it's diabetes yeah. or whatever it is. Um yeah, again, exactly. those are going to be a, a huge thing to to have on hand because you don't know what the supply chain is going to look like. You don't know how much it's going to cost, so you have to be ready for that. Yeah, and and I know we have several listeners that are like hardcore gardeners. You know, it's like yes, that's yes. going to get them so far. Yes, it's yeah, like, and that goes back to the skills. You know, mm-hmm. you can use those skills to freaking you know, be self-sustaining is pretty, yes, I need to be a better gardener. I do too. Um, I haven't done it for a few years and I need to get back you to You guys it. Like, used to freaking, yeah. like leave zucchinis all over your yard for us. For sure. Yeah. You're coming over, you get 16 zucchinis. <laughs> yeah. Take the zucchini home with you and a kid, <laughs> whatever you want, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Um, another one, another aspect of prepping for this is your security and your self-defense. As I talked about, um, Many times when this is going to happen, there's going to be chaos, there's going to be riots, there may be martial law. Um, So your home security and your self-defense are going to be crucial, especially if if you're living in a big city and things like that, because we know what happens in most cities. Grocery stores are out of food. Yes. Gas stations are closed. Where's the next best location to find food? Yo house. Yeah. Yo kitchen. (laughs) Yo mama's house. Yo mama's house. All that stuff. Mrs. Phil's house. (laughs) Go eat her cookies. Cook it time, bros. Cook it time. (laughs) Um, and you know, maybe people know that you're a prepper. Maybe you haven't been the best gray man. Maybe you got a podcast about prepping and everybody knows what you got. <laughs> so you have to be ready with that home security, with that self-defense. You know what I mean? Make sure that your bug in plan has that really good home security plan because people are going to be desperate and they're going to come after you. So a, a security system is going to be crucial. I, they're so cheap these days. You can do it for, um, 
You can do it Darn in your sleep. Enough. You can do it in a tree. You exactly. You can do it in a box. You can do it with a fox. Exactly. So get yourself a security Speaking system. Of, I need to set that one up. You do. Um, home defense weapons, 556-223, five, five, two, two, oh, yeah. all the things. Mm. <laughs> say it again, hey, brother. Now. Say it again. Put keep it in your pants, boy. All right. <laughs> so, Did you say 556 five, a terrible idea? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so you, you got to be thinking about those things. Um, crime's going to be way more rampant during economic hardships muggings carjackings petty theft violence raping what do people pillaging. have left you know it's like who cares they don't care I'm so go still if i get killed i get killed yeah so if you're running if you're going downtown be able to defend yourself if somebody comes after you so have some self-defense skills um understand self-defense weapons all of those things is going to be huge yeah for for all this you remember in uh, like one of the scenes in uh, World War Z mm-hmm. when he like has that gun in the shopping when they're like shopping and he yeah like has to defend himself and that cop's like running in yeah and he's like puts his hands up and the cop just runs by and grabs some grabs, baby formula exactly <laughs> but like, that's how it's gonna they're be not gonna if it's bad enough they're s- trying to survive themselves exactly um, yeah that that is a cool scene in that movie though isn't it that one um, was cool um you may have to scavenge again we've done a couple episodes on scavenging but. Think about that. Uh, that could it could get bad enough to where you got to figure out a way to exactly. And if, if society collapses in a real way for zoo. a long term, zoo. just live by the zoo, <laughs> eat giraffe neck for the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Ostrich gizzards, my favorite. <laughs> mm. And oh, you got to keep them live ostrich eggs. <laughs> yeah. These things are gigantic. <laughs> it's like them eggs sh- on Willy Wonka. Scrambled egg of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like you feed it's your whole big family. Pot full of egg. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah, you ever eaten ostrich eggs? <laughs> That's it's on Seinfeld. You Is ever that... eaten ostrich eggs? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's funny. Uh so be thinking about scavenging. Owl eggs were our other. Oh yeah, owl eggs. That was the other one. Delicacy. Um, be ready to bug out. Have that bug out plan, cause mm, might get too bad. It might. You might have to get out of there. There's actually a this lot of people. second person trying to break it. I'm out of here. Yeah. There's a lot of people in Venezuela that did flee the country. And I don't know if they had a bug out plan, but they bugged out, right? They got out of there due to those poor conditions. So always have a good bug out plan and have that Could gear you imagine ready. if we had to flee to Mexico, how well they would accept us? Well, how... I was like, ah. Uh, <laughs> Chinese accent. Chinese, guy, Chinese accent. Uh, how the heck do man. I do a, me- uh, a Mexican Hey, man, what are you doing? Hey, man. How's the tables are turned now, aren't they? <laughs> That fancy big problem. <laughs> that fancy big problem, man. Huh? Yeah. Maybe I'd have maybe should have built that fence. I don't know. <laughs> I know a way out. Yeah. I know a way under. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm not going to get the swimming, man. See if we can swim across that river. <laughs> um yeah, we actually had a, a listener send us a, an email. It's like, why don't you guys make fun of Mexican accents more often? We did for a while. I thought we did for a while too, but we, we try haven't. and spread it out. We're, we're trying to spread it out. Try and be, you know. But nobody gets mad when we do Russian accents, so that's why we kind of stick with that. <laughs> you know, right? Nobody yeah. cares. Nobody gives a crap. We even had he probably stopped listening because we offended him. But yeah, maybe guy in Russia like he even enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's probably enjoying it anymore. But. No, probably not. But we're um, not specific to any race. No, person. we just make fun of everybody. Okay? Everybody, everybody. Apparently, you can't do that anymore. But we do it. We do it. And screw you. My wife. I get in trouble with my wife, so. Yeah. Anyway. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is the skills and the knowledge. And we did talk about this a little bit, but um, in any SHGF scenario, the more skills and the more knowledge that you have, you're going to have a leg up over the masses of people that don't know anything. Most of them don't know jack crap There's about nothing. a lot that don't know anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. They got some knowledge on, like, Pokemon or... <laughs> I don't know. Something yeah. like this is useless. I know how right? to download some music for you from yeah. LimeWire. LimeWire? <laughs> yeah, I know which like ones LimeWire. don't. I know which ones not to download. <laughs> Lost a couple laptops that way. <laughs> you know? Two hard drives down the drain. <laughs> yeah. So you got to have that, that, that knowledge, you know? Um, but it's crazy how far we've drifted from mm-hmm. like that. Because, like, I feel like my dad can just jimmy rig up anything yeah for sure it's like he can weld yeah. um i don't know if he well he is a good welder but yeah like some of the stuff he's made to like function better for in, sure. on the farm i'm like what that's the? super dangerous <laughs> but it gets the job done way quicker we get the milk out to out the marketplace <laughs> yeah you know it works we got a shop back for backup <laughs> just been milking into a shop back for <laughs> come on bessie <laughs> 
but you know, it's like they're super the creative went down, nowadays. We're hit it's down like, with... well, power's out. We guess yeah. we'll just go. I'm depressed. I can't do anything. <laughs> That's how it is nowadays, yeah. too, man. Something breaks for me. I'm like, I guess I'll buy a new one. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know. True. I don't know what to do with it. You know, 